Being able to read expository texts like science texts and social studies texts is an important skill that students need, and many students struggle with it. So one thing that you can do is teach the students how to mark the text using a guided reading, have them mark the text, so that way they can read with a purpose. It helps them read, understand, make sense of what they're seeing, look at the vocabulary, and come up with their own ideas of what that reading is about. So let me show you what I do with my guided readings and how I have my students mark the text. So when I'm having my students mark the text, I usually have them use uh, different types of marking materials to highlight different parts. It could be a highlighter and a pencil or a pen and a pencil or different color of pens, however you want to do it. But you're going to have to want to have one of the markers to be for vocabulary and keywords and another one to be for key details that will help them answer your essential question or your big idea question. I like to also have my students make a key for themselves. So at the top, they might put um, circle and they're going to use this red one here. And this is means keywords. And then I might use a blue color and they're going to be underlining key, key details. So you're going to have them actually identify a code so that way they know what those different colors mean, what the circle means, what an underline means. You can also just have them use a highlighter for keywords too. Then we talk about um, what the essential question or the big idea question is that's going to be guiding their reading as they go through. And then as they're going through, you can have them read it a few times if you want to. And the first time they're going to just read through it. Second time they can read through it with their red marker or their highlighter and just circle key vocabulary. And then they can go back in a third time and get the key details. So if you have language learners or learners that have learning or students that have a learning disability, you might want to have them go through and read that text multiple times. So again, they're going to go through and they might go through and circle the key details after they've read it once and you can read it once together or you can do the read aloud and then have them go in with a partner for the next part. So after they've gone through and they've marked the text and they've circled now key vocabulary, then you can have them go through one more time. And again, I recommend having them do it with a partner or with a group. And now they're going to underline the key details, things that will help them actually answer the question. And then sometimes they might be actually circling the key or underlining the keywords also. So once they've come in and they've underlined the key details and they have circled the keywords, that's when you can have them talk and discuss with the group, you know, what they underlined, what they circled. You can have them come in here and write a little bit of an explanation of each one, just like a little sentences, or you could have them now fill in the notes section where they can be filling in this notes. Maybe you provide the question for them and they write the notes down or they could take information from here and make each part a note and put that that way. So you can have them take notes. And then finally, you can have them use that information now and apply it in a comprehension worksheet to see if they really understood the reading where they're going to have to go in here and they're going to be looking at different pictures to decide if it's um, an acid or a base based on their knowledge of what they just read about acids. They're writing the definition 
And then they're going to analyze information to figure out which solution is an acid, again, based on their reading. So to help students break this down, understand it, have them read that information a few times. One time just reading it so they can hear what it says and have you actually do the reading for that. Then have them go in with a partner and maybe just look for keywords. And then go in one more time with their partner and underline key details and then they can share with their group what they wrote down. So that means that they're discussing, they're talking, they're interacting with the text, text not once, not twice, but three times. Then a fourth time when they're gonna take notes and a fifth time when they're going to use that information to fill this worksheet. So that means that a total of five times will be used to interact with this text. And that's just for the basic parts for your actual lesson. You can always have them come back later on and write down a synthesis statement, draw a picture of what they learned, and so they actually interact with the text even more. The more times they can actually interact with a text and use that information, the better they're gonna be at understanding how to read expository text, science text, which is difficult for some students, and understanding and comprehending what it's actually gonna say. Thank you for watching another Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond videos. For more ideas on how to incorporate science, technology, and skills for life into your classroom, go to adventuresinistem.com.